What? Oh no! What is it? Is he dying? No, Robert's going to live, but how shall I say this? Robert isn't a he, he's a she. What? Dr. Binney thought it would be better if you recovered from your wounds here in his house, away from prying eyes. So while the doctor figures out what to do about a young soldier who everyone thinks is a man, but really is a woman, why don't you tell me your whole story? Where should I start? How about with your real name? My name is Deborah Sampson. Deborah, why would a woman enlist in the Continental Army? Heck, I was tall as most men, just as strong too, and I wasn't afraid to shoot a gun, so why shouldn't I fight for my country? I guess I was always kind of unconventional. See, my father went off to sea when I was a very young girl, and my mom was too poor to care for seven kids. So I worked from the age of 10 to 18 as an indentured servant. Indentured? You mean forced to stay and work, not able to leave until your mother's debt was paid off? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. And I'll tell you one thing. Working in the fields made me strong. After my chores were done, I taught myself to read, Sarah. I read every book I could get my hands on. I must have learned a lot, because when I turned 18 and earned my freedom, they hired me to be a school teacher. But I didn't think women were supposed to be school teachers. <laughs> I caused quite a stir, and I'll tell you something. I really did love teaching. I guess not following the rules just comes naturally to me. And since the army doesn't accept women, you enlisted as a man. Well, I sure tried. Timothy Thayer. Yes, ma'am. The problem was, I tried to join up in my own hometown. Not the smartest thing. Timothy Thayer, huh? Well, I only know of one person in this town that holds a quill that way because of an injured finger on her left hand. And that's the school teacher, Deborah Sampson. They caught you and you tried again? Why? Well, I just turned 21 and I didn't want to just get married. And I wanted to fight for my country. To all brave, healthy, able-bodied young men. <laughs> I knew the army was hard up for soldiers, so I went to a town further away and enlisted there. How on earth did you go unnoticed by the other soldiers? It was hard. They teased me about not shaving, so... <laughs> <laughs> I told him I was just too young to grow a beard. Your story is amazing! You took so many risks! Yes, but I was always afraid of being caught. I'd heard of some other women who disguised themselves as men to enlist. When they were discovered, they were disgraced. But you still had the courage to follow what was in your heart, no matter what the obstacles. Deborah? Hmm. You should rest now. What amazes me is that her disguise has gone undiscovered for over a year. What are you going to do? I'm afraid that I must follow orders and inform the army as to the true identity of Robert Shirtliff. What is it, James? Excuse me, General. About the letter you wrote to your nephew? Ah, uh, yes. I wrote to Lund that if Rochambeau had ordered the French fleet to sail south when I wanted, we could have captured that traitor Benedict Arnold and destroyed his army. I'm sorry to report that it's been printed in this New York Tory newspaper. Outrageous! That was a private letter to my nephew, and I was deeply upset when I wrote it. Now everyone, including Rochambeau, is going to read it. I will write Rochambeau an apology for my blunder. Dr. Franklin, your genius for inventions never ceases to amaze me. 
I thought a duet on my glass harmonica with Marie Antoinette might be nice. If you'll excuse me, Virgin, I believe the letter I've been waiting for has arrived. Is it from America? It's Congress's response to the letter I sent. Thank goodness they do not accept my resignation. They have the good sense to realize that when I resigned, I wasn't feeling well. I must write Congress and tell them that I'm feeling better, and it will be a great honor to once again buckle down to the business of America. Then I shall take my leave. Monsieur Virgin, the English have replied to your request for a peace conference. There will be no peace conference. The English refuse to attend. Why? Because King George considers it to be a matter solely between England and her colonies. That is the end of it. Sleep. You must be Henri. Follow me. I'll take you to your bunk. This is your bunk. There's someone in it. But of course, there aren't enough beds for the whole crew. So you sleep in it when he is on watch. I can handle that. I'll be too busy as a journalist to sleep anyway. So where do we eat? Sacre bleu! Is this what you usually eat? No, this is better. Wait till we set sail. That's when we get the bad stuff. Let's go, Penny! So, you're sure you don't want to continue as a journalist with the French Navy? Oui. I guess you could say, I don't have the stomach for it. <laughs> hey, Washington's talking to Rochambeau. Come on. Count Rochambeau, I am dearly sorry for any embarrassment I caused you with my letter. It was written in a time of distress and was meant to be private. Mon General, I received your letter of apology. Consider the matter of no consequence. Thank you, sir, but I must persist. Have you given any further thought to my suggested plan of attack? General, I have indeed considered your plan, and I'm now ready to join you in an attack on General Cornwallis in New York City. Boy, Sarah missed a really good story. No, I'm going to be disgraced. But what you did shows how dedicated you are to the cause of liberty. But I'm still worried they'll put me in jail for dressing as a man. Deborah Sampson, also known as Robert Shirtliff. Because you impersonated a man and enlisted against military policy. Here it comes. It is my honor to note your extraordinary instance of female heroism by discharging the duties of a faithful, gallant soldier. And therefore, I present you with an honorable discharge from the Continental Army of the United States, Light Infantry, Massachusetts 4th Regiment. that I was in a heap of trouble. Except you showed the whole nation what you are capable of. I reckon I did, didn't I? So, what will you do now that this adventure is over? I guess I'm just gonna have to find me another one. Another letter to your mother? Yes. 
I just had to tell her how impressed I was with Deborah Sampson. I'll tell you, she impressed me, leaving that shot in her shoulder. It's more than that. She made me wonder, if a woman can find a way to serve as a soldier, why can't she enjoy the same rights of citizenship that men have? Why can't this whole country be unconventional? I mean, aren't we already rebels? What are you doing? If I couldn't be a journalist, I wanted to show you I could be a printer all by myself. That's great. Now you could show us how you could clean up all by yourself. <laughs> <laughs>